Well hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about a plant that I get asked a heck of a lot about and one that I think receives some rather undeserved negative press and that is the brilliant in my eyes ragwort. Now this scraggly looking specimen to my right here might not look like much but with in the next few minutes I hope you are going to have a newfound love of this little wildflower because it is absolutely underrated as a plant for many many reasons. Now this plant here it's not very big let's be honest and yet with on it or within it or on it should I say if you can see I have counted no less than 35 of these black and yellow caterpillars. Now these are the caterpillars of the cinnabar moth which is a day flying moth absolutely gorgeous it's almost like got a, a pinky crimson uh, patch on its wings along with black and it really is unmistakable in flight it's just like this kind of pink and black flash um, whenever you see it sort of you know skirting across the edges of a herbaceous border or across a grassy area it really is a fantastic moth. Now the sole pl food plant I believe is the ragwort behind me here which is um, one that gets a lot of bad press now I'll explain why. Now for those of you that have horses or livestock in general you will I'm sure be wanting to go around and remove every single one of these plants that you can possibly find within your land and I would say rightfully so because of course it can be very detrimental to um, the livestock once they have ingested it. Now this did come up recently in a debate. I was, I've was i just finished exhibiting at the Global Bird Fair which if you haven't seen I'll put a link to at the end of this video where I made a wildlife garden in a marquee which was a really really cracking event and um, I was very honoured to be asked to be on the uh, panel for the wildlife gardeners question time in which we had 45 minutes to be thrown questions by you guys uh, so it was really fun actually I love doing stuff like that because you just never know what's going to crop up in conversation and one of the questions um, by a gentleman was can I have ragwort in my garden and is it safe to do so now as I've just suggested the the plant itself is poisonous and can actually kill horses and sheep uh, I'm not sure about cattle actually maybe you can answer that but I know it does have a very detrimental effect to horses and sheep if ingested in a certain volume um, the odd wispy plant of it here or there I believe is not enough to kill these animals but of course the problem comes when this plant is baled in a meadow setting so obviously horses and sheep will feed on um, bales of hay or bales of you know meadow grass whatever you have within you know an area that you might have baled for livestock feed so the problem is when they they cannot detect it when they are eating from this bale now if you to, are to simply have ragwort growing in a field with horses and sheep in it they will eat around it they're not stupid they know that it has a, a detrimental effect to them or it can give them you know um, a pretty hard time so they don't actually eat it and I've seen horses in fields um, that have you know almost like they've been mown with a mower bar these individual stems of ragwort popping up so they will eat around it but of course the problem lies where a field or a meadow is baled that has ragwort in it that ragwort is bailed up within the bale and then of course the animals can't really distinguish it from the rest of the feed so they just pull it off and eat it and if they eat too much of it if they ingest too much of it um, it can kill the animals so that's the problem with it now and I'm not trying to deny that at all um, because it is obviously a very serious one um, but what I'm saying is I think in a garden setting it is perfectly fine to have this plant I'm not saying you're going to have a garden full of it because well you'd want other stuff in there as well of course but for the amount of seed that one of these plants provides um, unless you live right next door to a, a field that has horses and sheep within it and the owners have kindly asked you to not grow any or pull it out of the ground then I think it's well worth having a few of these in your garden because they are absolutely brilliant not only that they are enjoyed by the likes of the meadow brown butterfly and they are one of the favourite um, nectar plants for the gatekeeper butterfly which is one of my all-time favourite summer butterflies it really is kind of the 
quintessential uh, summer butterfly for me. I know we are at the peak of summer once when I start seeing gatekeepers, which usually come out in the UK round about sort of early July time, early early to mid July, first two weeks of July. So there's plenty around at the moment. And actually, I'll put a clip in now on the other side of this site where I'm working. There are, or there were two on one plant, so really good to see them. And there's a few sort of flitting around here where there are a few bits dotted in this kind of longer grassier area, which are, as I say, in these volumes, I don't think an issue at all. But there are cinnabar moss on every single one of these plants. Now, and actually, I've just seen this, look at that. That is a mini ragwort that hasn't grown very high, probably because of the heat we've had recently. And there are one, two, three, four, five, if my eyes are working correctly, caterpillars on this plant. Now, I'm going to move them off that plant in a moment because one of the biggest problems that these caterpillars face is because they are um, quite often found in such large numbers, such as this plant here, where there are 35, no less, on this individual plant. Uh, yes, it is just one plant. Um, they can strip a plant bare. So, of course, food then becomes scarce. And if you've got to go from here over to there, nope, to there, <laughs> to the next plant, then of course they might not get there, they might not find it, they might, I'm sure they've got a sense whether they can smell the larval, the food plant for them, and then we've got another clump, mini clump just over there as you can see. But they can of course wander for miles. I've seen them wandering across the middle of a grassy area, across tarmac, just searching for um, that food source. So I'm going to take those guys off there in a moment because uh, yeah, there's not a lot of greenery left on that once they've finished with this, so they're voracious eaters. And actually, at my last house I lived in, I had a clump of this I grew in the middle of the lawn, and it, it, it ha actually got really big, about three foot tall. Um, and it's a, uh, it's a biennial, by the way, so it'll uh, put out its leaves in the first year and then flower in the second year and then die. That's it. So that's why you get kind of sporadic um, numbers of this plant. You might see a massive patch one year then nothing the next year. Um, and equally, I think that has something to do with the amount of um, cinnabar moths you see on these plants because some people often um, get in touch and say, why are there no cinnabar moths this year? And then you'll find a complete, um, I don't know, kind of almost like a... Uh, an individual isolated population of them where you wouldn't expect to find them or they weren't there the year before so they do move about quite a bit um but um yeah my last my last house i lived in i had one that was about three foot tall and i kid you not i had no less than a hundred caterpillars on on one plant and i had three plants in the garden um, and there were over 300 caterpillars within the garden 350 i think if my uh, memory serves me correctly, um, which is absolutely brilliant. And it shows the importance of growing a bit of this stuff because of course, everywhere else in the countryside, it's sprayed off, it's viewed as a pernicious weed. Um, it's pulled out the ground. So it really, really does get a lot of bad press and um, wrongfully so, I think, because uh, yeah, and, and, and again, I'm not trying to say that there aren't issues with livestock, which of course are people's livelihoods. I wouldn't dream of suggesting that, um, you know, we go against that to try and give nature a voice because, you know, we have to work with um, with livestock farmers, with anybody who owns any land if we want the world to be a better and greener place. So I'm not having a go at anybody for pulling it out. I'm just saying, I think in certain contexts and settings like this, it's absolutely fine. And as I say, it is a really brilliant plant and it's actually been recorded. It's one of the most visited um, plants in terms of visits from butterflies um, in the peak summer months of any wildflower. So it really does have a huge list of butterflies and it's loved by bees um, that actually visit it. And over 200 invertebrates have been associated with ragwort. So a really, really brilliant plant. So again, if it's safe to do so, if you don't have any livestock in your immediate vicinity and you're in a town, for example, um, then do encourage them into your garden. You can expect to see these iconic black and yellow caterpillars I think for me, they're probably the first caterpillar that I ever remember um, seeing when I was a child because they're just so iconic. You know, black and yellow stripes, is, which of course is a deterrent for birds to try and put them off from eating them. Um, those sort of kind of warning colours that we get in nature. But, you know, they're just so so uh, so unique. You know, they, they really are brilliant and they're something that I, I strongly remember 
as a child, having memories of finding them on the ragwort whenever I'd go on a walk in the countryside. So really, really fond memories of them. And I guess that's probably, probably one of the reasons why I love this brilliant and underrated wildflower. So ragwort, bit of a contentious issue, but that's my view. I hope you guys um, will leave some comments below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what experiences you've had with it. Let me know how the cinnabar moths are faring in your part of the world and um, whether you've had the black and yellow caterpillars and also what other insects you've found on it. So ragwort, try and spread the message if you can and try and you know educate people in the wonders of this plant and the importance of it because if I can find 350 caterpillars on three plants in one garden then I think it shows the importance of this plant where it is able to be left. So thank you so much for watching guys, really appreciate the support, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, give the video a like and I'll be sure to bring you many more videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in videos to come. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.